We've been fighting a long time. We have all lost so very much. So many loved ones gone. But you are not alone. There are pockets of resistance all around the planet. We are at the brink. You have no idea how important you are. If you're listening to this, you are the resistance. Ave Maricela, Dei Mater Alma, Ave Semper Virgo. What if we could go back, ask the saints and scholars of the past to teach us the faith today? Hi, I'm Aaron Sang, president of Tradivox, a Catholic nonprofit working to recover the official catechisms of Catholic bishops and councils from across the last millennium. And there are hundreds of these. Restoring and republishing them now is a beautiful new multi-volume series a cohesive, clear, and accessible guide to the enduring faith of our fathers across time and space. But it gets better. Tradivox is also working toward an interactive media platform unlike any other, a tool that will forever change how we're able to access, learn, and teach the Catholic faith handed down to us from the apostles. Our data set is the fixed magisterium of hundreds of Catholic bishops centuries past teaching the faith today, the faith as it's been held and taught and lived throughout the centuries and across the globe. We're giving voice to tradition, and we need your help. I invite the faithful of the entire world to support this historic effort as we seek to restore the perennial catechism of the Church. May God bless you. Hey everybody, it's Steve with Census Fidelity. I'm coming at you on the 10th of March, 2020. And coming with you with Tradivox, with Aaron, is it Sang? It Sang? is Sang. Yes. Sang, who has started this catechism or renewal process. He's just going to do a little about what they are and what the background is and what their plans are in the future. I've already read it. If you haven't gotten this one, it's fantastic. I'm especially a fan of, is it, is it Vox? Vox? Vox. Vox? Yeah. Uh, I, I was telling him off camera, so I'm going to have to re reread that and read that again, especially when my kid gets older. But anyway, Aaron, thank you for coming on. And uh, yeah, congratulations on this project you're doing. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for having me on the show. No problem, no problem. So tell us about it. What, uh, what is it? What inspired you to do this? Sure. Well, Trad to Box, we, uh, our mission is giving voice to tradition. That's hence the, hence the title, kind of coupling that tradition and uh, voice. Um, golly, the seed was kind of planted. We've, we've been popping up a few places now. Uh, I mentioned a life site. I think it was last week that uh, initial seed was back my monastic formation. I was really uh, discerning religious life with the Benedictines. Uh, I was back in 2005, and that was kind of the first time that it stood out to me that uh, one of the works that the Lord's kind of done in church history, especially some major crisis periods, was to preserve and then also advance both you know, the integration of faith and reason and Catholic culture and, of course, preserving the faith and handing it on. And a lot of that was uh, took place through this kind of monastic transcription work, translation work, manuscript work. So it was... Um, it was early in the pontificate of Benedict XVI. I, I just kind of personally started compiling uh, catechetical manuscripts. You know, some collect stamps, some collect baseball cards. Um, yeah, I, I just, it was, it was largely a personal collection. And as I kind of waded in, of course, there are, of course, hundreds of uh, catechisms that span 
the last uh, better part of the last millennium. And um, I, I eventually I, I kind of reached out to uh, some volunteers. I had a lot of uh, enthusiastic folks similarly minded and said, you know, we've got this one on the docket. We've got to go find it because there is no list. It's, yeah, it's yeah. kind of interesting. There's a few um, like old Catholic encyclopedias and things like this that have mentioned some of the more standout titles, you know, of catechisms uh, over the centuries. But, um, but we, that was, that was homework, you know, for years was just uh, building that collection. I, uh, of course, as we were raising our kids, looking at, uh, well, which one did we want to pull off the shelf? You know, some do better with pictures, some do better with short and simple, some do better with what well, we really want more uh, examples, you know, and uh, illustrations and things. And so uh, that was, that was really the genesis some years ago. Um, to date, we have, now we've got, gosh, we've moved into, I think the last count was 30 odd volunteers now across several countries. Um, and we approached, of course, His Excellency Bishop Athanasia Schneider last year mm -hmm. uh, with, with regards to the project, um, both to inform him and then, and then also seeking just kind of his blessing. You know? um, and he just immediately responded. I, we, he, he was brought to our attention when he did a forward I think it was for um, the Bellarmine gosh, Catechism. I can't, it it might have been. Yeah, it was. It was a reissue either of a catechism or one of the old dogmatic theologians. And um, so he kind of popped up on the radar. We said, "Well, he, I bet he'd love this." You know, <laughs> so reached out to him. I mean, just immediately. You know, he he responded. He's been he's been the biggest our biggest fan <laughs> and our certainly our our biggest supporter. So he's um, yes, he he has since become uh, really Episcopal advisor to the work and. Uh, we're, gosh, we've just been inundated. I mean, since then, um, I think we, this is what I continue to tell people, I think we hit a nerve in the mystical body <laughs> because uh, there's, there's, yeah, there's definitely a perceived need out there. Well, so I just got done putting a couple of videos together uh, today from the sermons and they were both talking about how the scripture readings are t the failure of teaching uh, that God will, will, keep us going with the little bread from the, the, the blessing from the day, but we need the catechetical lessons and the people that know that they're, we're missing are upset that we're not getting enough. And the ones that don't know that they're missing it are happy. Oh, everything is hunky dory. Yay. 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 So like I said, reading this so far yesterday was going, man, I would love just to have all three <laughs> for now. This is just volume one. How many volumes do you guys got coming out of this? Yeah, right now we've got 20 targeted volumes uh, in print. We there are hundreds of catechisms. I mean, so each each volume, uh, the the majority of them have multiple catechisms per volume. Um, number one is, is some of the the penny catechisms, the, the brief, uh -huh. uh, really compelling, as you know <laughs> now having read them. Um, unapologetic, you know, they're just they're just straight, short, simple to the point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we do have right now kind of targeting 20 volumes in English. We have, of course, now we have exploding requests for other language editions. We have several that are involved in translation um, on the volunteer side uh, that we're, we're just kind of, we're trying, we're trying to kind of hold them back for a time being while, while we uh, finish right. out the, yeah, we, we've got to prioritize. So um, it is there and they're, they're amazing. I mean, the, the catechisms themselves, it, as you say, kind of each individually is is profound, but uh, taking them in in chorus in concert that 's really what hasn 't been done before that's that 's kind of the standout aspect of our project is being able to put them in conversation with each other really across across time you know several centuries, but space too i mean you have uh, the catechism of course from across the world, and um, traditionally the the classic example of a bishop's uh, ordinary magisterium was the illustration of a particular catechism, you know, promulgating a, a catechism. Any any of the old dogmatic manuals, when they're talking about you know the ordinary magisterium, you say, well, what's that about? They'll say, well, for example, when a bishop issues a catechism, you know, formally uh, issues a catechism for his diocese. So imagine, I mean, the, the visual was kind of given to us some some time ago. It was like what if you could take bishops across time and space, sit them all in a room and then ask them, you know, the eminent uh, fathers, please teach us about X. 
and then just pull the audience, you know, <laughs> of all the bishops, several countries, you know, several time periods, and then just be able to say, can I trace a, an essential continuity, you know, of that teaching across this room, you know, these voices. And that's, that's what we're after. Um, Cause the catechisms themselves, before there was Google, that was the idea. You, you have a simple, you know, a sound biteable basically text that could just very simply distill not, some of them are, are compendious, but most of them are not deep dives. Um, a lot of them have exhaustive scholarly apparatus, you know, so they'll have in, incredible amounts of references, you know, that you can go track down after the fact. But, uh, but the idea was, how can we distill, you know, these hundreds of years of traditional doctrine, faith and morals, and then just kind of package that uh, at, a, at a fairly rudimentary level, um, most of them are, are like that. They're like Google. So then a Google of Googles is <laughs> for faith and morals. That's really what we're after. Well, like uh, in this one, it's got, you know, three, oh, I think were they all from England and they were all in the 1500s and they were all easy to read, but yeah, it was, it was just like reading, uh, I wouldn't say Trent, but the Bellman or, you know, the Cassius Catechism or Baltimore Catechism is the same you know, structure, same field, there was nothing new under the sun. You're going, wow, this could be printed today and still be the same thing four or 500 years ago. This, it, was, this, it was fantastic to read it. What has been your favorite uh, ca catechism so far or what has been the coolest one that you said? Oh, seen? golly, no, you, can't, you can't ask me that, Steve. It's, it's like a baby, <laughs> like a kid. <laughs> uh, no, it's, 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 that's one of the first things we, we all get asked. So what's, what's the best or what's your fa favorites I can, I can do? Um, I, I, I am more partial to the texts that came in and around the Anglican schism. So mostly, yeah, 1500s, 1600s, there's, and, and a lot of that is for devotional reasons. I, I have a great love for the English martyrs. Um, and the, when you read these texts, that's part of what we have, what we're trying to do in the preface also for each volume is to give a little of the context. You know, what's the history of this, this one yeah, that text? Was what about yeah. Oh my goodness. And, and the stories are just incredible. I mean, and each one, each one has this amazing uh, context and the history for the author himself, you know, the volume two, we've got one who was a convert, who's a Benedictine and uh, was the first of English children. It's in the first generation of English children to be raised, not Catholic in almost a thousand years <laughs> in that country. It's, it's incredible. You know, what, what the Anglican schism really brought about in that yeah, country. Yeah. And so, so he's raised as a non-Catholic, 17, he's brought into the church uh, by his uncle, who's a Benedictine. And then he goes on in the relative obscurity of cloistered life. You know, he, he enters the church, becomes a Benedictine, professes, and he, uh, and he composes this catechism for children to be, to be used by their parents. It's this really profound, you know, kind of a, nod to the important his 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 author's introduction is all about you know what about the importance of the parent in handing on the faith of the church above all in a time of crisis i mean it's very pertinent <laughs> we might say and uh and then and then from his kind of personal story he has even more poignancy to it so it is everyone has a need so that, that was a that was a bit of a punt. I have to actually answer your question. So, so um, is that in volume two, you said? <laughs> yes, that's, that's Sadler. So he's, he'll be in volume two. And um, yeah, I, I have always been uh, really drawn to the, the English, uh, kind of the Elizabethan persecution catechisms. Um, but some of my favorites are, are uh, somewhat obscure. There's one by a, a, the redoubtable Scott uh, Bishop George Hay. So there's a, this old Scottish catechism, 1700s. And um, it's, it's one of the more compendious, I, I want to say it's three, three or four volumes. Okay. And um, boy, you, they don't write them like that anymore. I mean, any of these, any of these texts you read, it, you just say, well, when have I, when have I heard something, you know, like this? So, um, and it's, it's fascinating. It's, it's truly fascinating. Not, not just to see any individual text teaching, but to see the continuity, because you can go from, you know, we've got one that's actually Scotch English, so it's barely readable. We're still working on a, a good, a good Scottish, uh, a good Scotsman to help us out. <laughs> 
because it's it might be the earliest ever uh, vernacular English catechism to to actually come out in original English because most of them were Latin and then were translated. But uh, but the state of scholarship right now looks at this this might be the earliest one, mid mid fifteen hundreds, and uh, but it's in Scotch English, so it's <laughs> it's a uh, it's a little harder for us Americans, you know, America <laughs> deal with that. But uh, but we're we're look we're working on that one too. So yeah, there's there's some incredible text. Wow, uh, and you keep mentioning Google. Uh, I saw on the website you guys are doing an online thing too. Uh, how's that working? And when? Would that be available by sure that's that's down range we're We're looking at probably two years out right now mm -hmm. um, the The digital development side is for many uh, as i think for me is is probably the most compelling piece it's um it's incredible I mean what we can do with this data set has never been done, and it is uh, the, my mind it just boggles every time I think about it because it, I mean, the, a lot of the software right now that's that's just coming into its own. So think of like text to speech, think of voice recognition, think of when you're driving down the road and you say, you know, hey Alexa, where's the nearest gas station? You know, these kind of things. Um, and we can harness that. I mean, imagine harnessing a doctrinal data set. You know, that was designed to be, so you have the official teaching of Catholic bishops across time and space, mm -hmm. designed to be engaging predominantly lay people um, in an accessible, you know, concise, distilled teaching, matters of faith and morals. And then when I can put all of those voices in concert with each other and actually do it by voice, I mean, this is what we're, what we're looking at right now. Um, so it, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's incredible. I mean, the potential is, is huge. Um, we're, yeah, we're looking to secure that portion probably two years out and, um, yeah, it's, it's exciting. Oh, wow. Yeah. Is your background IT to think about that? Cause I mean, I'd have to have about six of these to come up with an idea like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, fortunately we've, we've got better minds, better minds for that portion than, than mine. No, I, uh, I mean, definitely the vision, uh, it has, has been there for some time. I've, I've, uh, I've sat with this for long, most, mostly because, it's it's come out of um, interested donors, investors, this kind of thing, where where we'll just just sitting down and saying, you know what what's what's the catechism got to say about pick pick your topic, you know, Eucharist or uh, the nature of the church. I mean, this is a huge one. Teaching on what what the church is is tremendous, um, and just being able to pick up, you know, I, I put a few in here, just you know, some of the older ones. You could you could pick up this shelf worth. These are all antique, you know, catechisms. You could pick up this shelf worth, pull pull any given one of them, and trace this kind of continuity that has this rather abrupt and jarring mm, something or other that happens to it right about when public domain <laughs> law comes into effect. So the the other big question that we get you know is well what's what's the most recent of course you know what's the most recently published one that you're working on and uh and we only pull texts that are in uh that are, that are governed by uh public domain and fair use so so we yeah we trace what what the copyrights exist up to i think 52 might be one of the, might be the latest and uh and they're they're fascinating is you, you see this continuity that goes right through that entire period. Uh, and then as many of your audience are likely aware, uh, there are a number of catechisms written after that period uh, that, that, be that bear a rather striking uh, departure from uh, on certain points uh, from, from that kind of cohesive witness of, of the preceding centuries. So, so taking those yeah, in concert and just then being able to hand them to someone and say, what do you think? Do, you know, do the work. You, you can do it. That's the beauty of it is, is I can look at the continuity and I can, I can assess for myself, you know, what, what's, what, uh, what is that essential continuity? And then what do I make of things that don't match that? And then maybe I have, you know, the burden of further investigation, further study, you know, informing myself of the truths of the faith. So it's, yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic tool for that. So uh, you got our interest. What are the catechisms behind you? Okay, back here we've got the, well, the oldest one is falling apart, so I'll, I'll only pull it out. 
but this is this one is featuring in volume two. This is the Douay Catechism. Most people know it by that name. Uh, its its technical title is an abridgment of <laughs> the Christian doctrine with proofs of scripture on points controverted by way of question and answer. So you can see why it has a moniker. <laughs> but we've got, uh, yeah, so that's, that's Douay or Turberville is the author. We've got Butler's Catechism. We've got the Seeker's Catechism. We've got, oh, here's, this is always a, this is always a fun one. De Harb's Catechism. See, so you can see by the size, a lot of these are, are uh, tracked size. I mean, that was, that was the idea, especially early on, was you'd have a tract size, often minuscule print, small as they could handle it with woodcuts and whatnot. Uh, but something that could be slipped and uh, into a pocket. Um, because a lot of these, this was a capital offense. I mean, this, this one in particular was not, but Douay sure was. You, you were caught. Elizabethan England, you owned this catechism. You, you, were, you were on it. <laughs> you, you were going to trial, maybe for your life. You know? So the, again, that kind of the history of each is, is really powerful, I think. But, but yeah, let me just pull out a little, a little show and tell from DeHarves here. So some of these, like, uh, like the gravity with which the old catechisms regard heresy. I mean, this is one of the things that has been just widely kind of overlooked, I feel, um, in a lot of the last several decades is the nature of heresy as a species of murder, as a subspecies of murder. I mean, the, in the old catechisms, they talk about it that way. So here's, here's a De Harb's large catechism under the fifth commandment. So the moral section, fifth commandment of God, thou shalt not kill. What, uh, and most of these are question and answer format. So fans of the Baltimore will be, will be familiar, but uh, question under the fifth commandment. What does God forbid by this fifth commandment? Answer, by the fifth commandment, God forbids us to injure our neighbor or ourselves in body or in soul. And this is uh, a sub-question. A sub <clears throat> when do we injure our neighbor spiritually? We injure our neighbor spiritually when we scandalize him. And the following, is scandal indeed a great sin? Scandal is a very great sin. For he who gives scandal is a minister of Satan and a murderer of souls. The end. Okay, so, I mean, this is the kind of, just short, to the point, but maybe a bit more uh, alacritous, shall we say, than the, some recent things. But, um, yeah, Catechism of Perseverance, Abbe Gaume, that's the great French uh, multi-volume catechism, but it has a, a pretty good English rendering in the 1800s. Uh, another de Harb, here's, here's some text from Aquinas, actually. So, uh, after the angelic doctor lived, a number of his uh, opuscula were, um, were kind of packaged as, as a catechism. So these were kind of more of his uh, brief, uh, often again targeted for lay, sometimes employed in homiletics, uh, and kind of systematically arranged them and kind of employed as a catechism. Uh, and then this is Vos. So you liked Vos. This is a, this is a folio, early copy folio of, of Vos, an original. And um, yeah, Vos is powerful, man. He, so the, the story around him especially is, is fascinating. I mean, you have a priest who is, is even mentioned in a lot of the, uh, the contemporary Protestant literature. So some of the official histories that are now being written you know, about the nation. And Vos is kind of this passing mention you know, here and there, and almost always in conjunction with his having authored a popish catechism, you know, a popish catechism. And he himself, his, his earthly fate is, is unknown, except that uh, he's regarded as a martyr. Um, it's known that he was captured. It's known that he was interrogated and asked, are you the same Lawrence Vos who authored a popish catechism in English? You know, to which he, he answers, yes, yes, that's me. Um, and so we, we know he was imprisoned and suffered. Um, and he's regarded as a martyr by his contemporaries. But, uh, but his, his actual end is unknown. And there's so many stories like that from that period. So how do you come, you said you collected these like baseball cards. How, how do you get these? I mean, did you get, eBay wasn't around then. Did you go to like, uh, yeah. <laughs> how'd you do it? Sure. Uh, everyone, everyone has its own story. I mean, a lot of them, a lot of them were, uh, yeah, obscure book hunts online. 
Um, but we, we also were reaching out to some of the international archival groups to, that just do that. There's several now that actually in the last year or two, I want to say, um, there's, there's been some incredible interlibrary efforts uh, made for that reason. You know, we, like I remember calling the, the Queensland library, you know, in Australia, saying, I know you have it. I know you have <laughs> all this. And, uh, and, you know, help me out. It's, so they, so there are several that, uh, that are accessible in microfilm that way. Um, and some that, that don't exist, you know, in print anymore. Um, some that, that do exist in microfilm, but only microfilm. Um, but we, yeah, everyone has its own kind of <laughs> Indiana Jones sleuthing adventure behind it. <laughs> is there one that you can't find that you're trying to find? There is one. There is one. So any of your any of your listeners who who get a hold of this and, and can find it, we, I, I'd, I'd like to say there's a cash reward. I don't know if I could promise that or not, but yeah, there's there's actually a we have um, a couple of priests, uh, uh, Latinists of ours on the team that are that are digging still on this, but um, it is the Ignorancia Sacerdotalis, I think is is the original, and so it, so it is. It is a Latin catechism, uh, and it was, I want to say, late 1100s, early 1200s, and it, it served as kind of the base text for what, what came to be known in English as the lay folks catechism, uh, which now you can see all over, except that uh, the one you get now is a, is a Protestant recapitulation uh, of the text by the same name. So it has had some slight emendations to it, uh, over the years, but um, but the base text is is the one we're after, and I, I we haven't been able to secure whether or not there is a complete uh, original of that one left. But again, if anybody has any leads, there, please, yeah, reach out. <laughs> so your Indiana Jones line made me think about that. So where's where's your uh, Holy Grail that you're looking for? <laughs> oh golly, there. I mean, fortunately, the the um, most of the texts, especially since they, the preponderance of them post date uh, the Catechism of the Council of Trent, after which time, the they just they just all go into print so many times and are so widely diffused that they're we we haven't other than that Latinate one we haven't found one yet that we we haven't been able to find and uh, and then do archival scans of it and and uh, get it into our our process for for remastering. The content but um but there is one that i would love uh i would love to see an original of that i, I still haven't seen i don't know if there is if there is such and that is the brebeuf uh catechism so jean de brebeuf many of our your, your canadian fellows will know very well um he he comes another fascinating story comes to north america um as as of course one of the great uh early evangelists and catechists of that period, he, he does this fantastic work of being the first to try and master Wendat. Um, many are familiar with the, the Huron Carol, um, which is this really moving uh, Christmas Carol, but it's, it's in Wendat, so the, so the Huron Indians. And he, he does this work of uh, basically writing his own dictionary of, of uh, cross translating because he himself is French, you know, of course. So so here you have, you know, Latin and then this this movement into French and then this re-movement from Latin into Wendat or from French into Wendat. And then he he translates a at that time a French catechism, Ledema, who uh who is also in volume one. So that that catechism, Ledesma for for us Americans. Uh that, that French catechism is the base text for uh, De Brebeuf to use and then translate into Wendat. So it's, it's one of these amazing uh, kind of instances of using the, the found, you know, mission situation and then being able to yeah, recapitulate the Catholic doctrine uh, using not only the terms, because some of these he had to invent. I mean, he had to invent words for some of these concepts that... Uh, of course, in, in Wenda, there was no term. And in the culture, there just was not even a, a thought category there already. So, so it's, it's amazing work. And I would love to find, 
get my hands on one of the original Wendat Ray Boeuf catechisms, but I, I'm, I'm probably dreaming. I don't think there are any. Somewhere hidden in France, maybe. It could be. It could be. Or, or you know, Great American West. Uh, who knows? I, I really don't know. I don't know. So uh, you've mentioned other languages. Are you making the catechisms, not translating them, but just keep them in their original language? Spanish, French, Italian, for Spanish-speaking people, et cetera? Uh, yes. So right now we're focusing on texts that already already exist in an English translation uh, or were originally authored in English. Um, yeah, we have, oh my goodness, we have requests pouring in for every language under the sun. So both from the standpoint of there are catechisms in those languages, there are hundreds in French and German that, that we I mean, that we, that we have, but that we're not touching yet. Um, and yeah, add to that Italian, Spanish, especially uh, the classical languages. And, um, but yeah, right now we, we're focusing on English. And I mean, down the road, we'd love to both, both bring back those other language texts, but then also, you know, re-render what we do have in the English ones in, into you know, other languages. And we do, with, just today I had, I can't even remember multiple requests. <laughs> for, well, when did when do you have French? When do you have you know here? When Filipino? You know we're we're looking for what's what's shipping cost to New Zealand? You know this is they at least they at least can can read. It, I, I get so, that a yeah. lot. Do any Polish sermons? Go, yeah. yeah, right. And I'm like gosh, we're out here. We should. <laughs> uh, let's see. Are you guys doing any video courses on the catechism down the road with the the Google part of it, like? Uh, I don't know, like uh, you know, with the online category, teaching the context of the catechism, why it was written, who it was written by, and the teaching from it, et cetera. Sure. Well, the sky's the limit. I mean, that's where right now we're talking to a number of different research institutions for that same reason. Let's just say, look, what, 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 we, what we have, what we got here, <laughs> what we have on our hands here, it really is an unprecedented kind of archival research tool for historical and theological scholarship. Um, catechetical methods. I mean, just there's so much you can tap from from this data set by itself. Um, yeah, so so we are we do we do have a view to um, kind of coursework. We've we've already been talking with a few uh, other publishers too about just derivative works on even topically. I mean, because I mean, you could do just entire series on well, what about the Eucharist in eight centuries of catechisms and just just have tiled content like that or or compare and contrast you know there's there's a lot of um, a lot of the catechisms were written with a view to refuting very particular doctrinal errors um, that are alive and well today uh, and what about I mean there's this of course uh, renaissance of catholic apologetics type material and what about harnessing the apologetical catechism back then they were called the controversial catechisms the term is, is perhaps out of vogue. It's too controversial. We can't use that term anymore. But uh, yeah, formerly known as the, the controversial catechisms. But there's a whole suite of, of those as well. You know? And so being able to uh, tap the apologetics uh, approaches and, and tactics and examples and you know, all these things from the last several centuries to kind of marshal that today uh, and at a glance, you know, at a glance. I mean, that's Yes, those are those are some of the things that that we're looking to down the road as well. We're talking thousands of books you probably have, right? I we haven't hit a thousand yet. We I don't we yeah no we haven't hit a thousand, but uh, but there are thousands. I mean, this in in turn I should say we we haven't hit it in terms of uh, text that we have we have entered into the remastery process. We we haven't pushed that many, but uh, but there are that many. I mean, it's. There, uh, no one knows how many, but s certainly across the, uh, well, I'll give you an example, you know, Bellarmine by itself. So Bellarmine did two, uh, did two catechisms, a, a shorter and a longer. And, uh, and the shorter one in particular, which is showing up in our second volume. So we're, we're recovering his, the highly illustrated edition of his, of his second catechism will be in our uh, volume two. And, and it went into, I want to say 50 some different language editions, you know, hundreds of editions and 50 plus, if I remember right, languages. So it, and it's one of the most yeah, widely disseminated and re, 
um, yeah, and, and multiple multi editions type texts uh, in in the history of the catechism genre for well, sure. So. Yeah, I just got done reading uh, Philip Hughes' book on the crisis of the Church, the Councils, and it talked about Vatican I wanting to make the Bellarmine Catechism the universal catechism. Yes, yes, that's that's of course one of the biggest aspects of of Bellarmine's work is. It was regarded highly, I mean, not just that it was composed by, you know, an eminent scholar and doctor of the church, one of the greatest in the history of the church, but that, uh, but that it was a significant enough work for a general council to consider it um, a pattern, a model for the universal catechism, which was, which was on the docket until they were unfortunately interrupted by war and such. But uh, yes, it's, it's both of, both of his texts are, are uh, very worthwhile, yeah. So I saw volume two is in pre-order right now. When's that coming out? And uh, I guess after 20 catechisms, is this going to be like every other month going to pop another volume out or how long is it going to take to get them all, you think? Yeah, good question. A lot of that depends on our funding right now. Um, we can, we're, we've got a model where we can expand and contract a production timeline in, in response to the funding, which is, which is a great way to do it. Right now, volume two will be, be available to everybody in April, volume two. Um, members have access for, uh, for pre-order already, but, uh, but that'll be yeah, available to everybody in April. And then we, it kind of depends on each volume. We, we have, um, they'll be pro progressively longer. Uh, to, we're, we're trying to kind of assess what our, our printer can handle. So the, um, so this next, so the first volume, you know, that, that you've got in hand is 160 pages. The second will be, closer to 360 um, and we'll 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 stay between two and 450 pages per uh, really from here on out and um, they're so great they're so what great members, yeah. uh, membership or members what do you what the what do you get to be a member what's the perks of becoming one oh it's just to sign up um, we we've got a just on the main landing page we have a kind of a member portal so sign up it's discounts in the store um, although gosh now I said it we we actually began the, the printing hoping that we would kind of hide it in all honesty because <laughs> we aren't doing on Amazon we aren't going on resellers right now um, in in the hopes that we wouldn't face the kind of <laughs> response that we have had which is great um, but we yeah we, we've got a we're now having to dial up like a, a whole another cadre of volunteer time just to handle book orders so we're we're in conversation with a couple of publishers now and um, and and hopefully that'll that'll smooth out a little better and we can get a faster turnaround time because right now we do we print on demand so it's 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 long most people are, are fine waiting for it but um, but we'd love to get them right in hand to people so so we're sorting that right now. Um, we got a, a couple of uh, a couple of those conversations being had, but uh, yeah, the members themselves uh, get at least right now, you know, access to uh, the volumes before anybody else does, um, and then they get a little discount in the, that they can use in the store. Um, but otherwise, they're the ones that we're kind of keeping in the loop of where's what's our milestone, you know, right now. What's our what's our big goal right now? Um, we we don't. Uh, we don't kind of uh, bomb email addresses much, mostly because we don't have time to. Our, our team is is just we're so focused on production right now. But uh, but anytime there's a major you know mile marker, we we try to get a blast out and just say hey you know volume two is gonna is 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 here you know or um, or hey we you know we just ran a a um, a piece that you know now we're not doing that either of giving people advising folks of where we've showed up in in catholic land because it's just it's just too much i mean the the response has been absolutely incredible we're which we're grateful for uh, but like i say i think we i think we had a nerve yeah people see the need and they um and of course you know his excellency has been fantastic about the work too he he pointed out something to me um a while back that I, I, I found uh, really impactful. And it was the significance of a tool like this for non-Catholics. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you really think about it, so many converts to the faith you know, attribute much of that, especially men, I think just, just being more inclined that way, attribute much of their journey to 
the awareness of, the study of, the awareness of, and then the conviction of uh, the church's doctrinal continuity over time. That, that just is one of the motives of credibility that, that seems to stand out, especially today when you know, much, much more of the world is literate, <laughs> for example, um, and, uh, and, and feel comfortable you know, picking up a text and, and really an, analyzing it themselves. Um, so yes, when his, his excellency pointed that out of imagine this kind of a tool for a non-Catholic when you can, especially in a time of serious ambiguity, you know, and, um, and confusion in the midst of the church, uh, in the living magisterium, as, as we could say, uh, but then being able to place into someone's hand, look at this, you know, look at, look at what has, has been taught and to be able to trace that up. And what is this, how, how does this strike you? Kind of thing. And then just, just do the, put the pieces together. You know, we've never really had a way to do that uh, at a glance. That's, that's been something we have lacked, I think, uh, up, up to this point. Because, because how would we, how would we have, you know, when you say to somebody, well, just read, just go read the scripture in the fathers, you know, and you, and you'll, it's clear as day, you know, but uh yeah, right, right. In in their in their original language too, you know, don't do none of this translation stuff. But uh, but when am I able to do that with a text that was conceived with the average readership in mind, and then I can show that you know across several countries, continents, cultures, uh, just and, and of course centuries. That's that's something that we haven't been able to do. You know, to do that at a glance, that's that's potent. Spoken stuff and throwing the context behind it, he makes it even even cooler. Really, uh, just why yeah. did, why was this re- uh, written? Uh, I guess I'll read it just to see what came from this guy. Um, yes. Obviously, all the links will be underneath in the show notes section, and description part. But if anybody has any questions underneath the video, <laughs> nobody sees that part. <laughs> Anyways, so how can people help you out? What do you need from people? How can they help you out? Where do they go find you? Sure. Well, we're, most of our finding out can be done at the website. It's just www.tradivox.com. Um, that's our main site. Of course, find the video, you know, share that with friends. It's great. Uh, we're, we're definitely still in the work of uh, promoting it and sharing it. Um, our biggest need is, is definitely sustainable funding through the end of the project. We're, we're looking at a four to five year timeline right now uh, to series complete app uh ready to go and um we we have some of those conversations in mind uh, of course the grants and foundation work but we need we need major funding um still to kind of put that in place over the next five years um and then folks just of any amount we we are overwhelmed with the positive response and volunteering you know folks that say well i can give i can give time and that's that's fantastic we we have a lot of that, uh, which is great. But um, yes, our, our big need right now is, is the long-term funding. We do sponsors. We have so many. We have a very gracious base of private donors uh, that have been fantastic for a number of years now. Um, and we do honor them in the opening pages of our print volumes. So I love this. We've, we've done a couple of parish fundraisers. You know, we come on site. And, uh, and just say, hey, to the parish, you know, look around at your stained glass. You see names. You know, there's these names in the stained glass. This is a beautiful testament to these families that were barely getting by, you know, and they scrimped together X so that they could have that stained glass window, you know, in my parish. And this is the kind of work that is not site specific. You know, you can, you can see the testament of Catholics who are convicted and committed to handing on the faith of our fathers, and this is a way that we can do that concretely. Um, we we really want to share that with uh, with the faithful, especially, uh, and and universally. I mean, especially those who are you know at the end of the day so much, so much more than maybe in previous ages, scratching their head and saying, I I don't even understand what you know I read in the Catholic newspaper the other day, or I'm so confused, or I'm so angry. You know, I'm scandalized. I'm, I'm offended by the kind of ambiguity or false teaching that I'm seeing or this kind of a heterodoxy that's allowed to flourish, you know, in my immediate surround. And, but so many of them feel uh, helpless. 
so many of them feel like, well, other than praying and fasting, which I'm doing, you know, <laughs> what, what can I do? And, and we want to say, we can resurrect the witness of bishops who have faithfully taught the tradition of the church across time and space. We can do that. You know, you can do that. You can do that today. That's, that's something that, that we, uh, we want to put in front of the faithful everywhere. Yeah, take and read, baby. <laughs> yes. Yes. Totally like you. Well, Aaron, appreciate it, man. This is, great. this is incredible work you're doing. And uh, anything like, anytime you need to do something like this, just let me know. We'll schedule it out, promote you guys. Just ask. Awesome. So, uh, anything else you can think of? Golly, well, the only thing is to please pray for the work also. Of course, we need, uh, need the intercession of the, of the saints. And uh, we're particularly devoted to the English martyrs and, of course, Our Lady, Queen of Martyrs. And, um, yeah, so we appreciate any, even after this video, if you can, if you can push, you know, push pause or stop or whatever, you know, and go say Hail Mary for, for the work of uh, restoring the faith in our times. We'd, we'd greatly appreciate that. Amen to that. Well, Aaron, appreciate it, man. We'll talk soon. Right on. God bless you, Steve. Thanks. You too, bud. Bye.